This video is a warning. We've sent it back in time. It's not the only thing we've had to go back in time to do. Today I'm making Traitor Guard Command Squad. This video is sponsored by Hero Forge. The only thing keeping me going in this dark future of AI rebellions. But to tell the story of how I did my Traitor Guard, well, let's just start from the beginning. That's right, in the world of the far future, Murray has become the leader of the resistance. Jen, I need you to hold Hemlock 7. Go now while there's still time. For the resistance. You had a special Warhammer related mission for me. Yes, I need you to go back in time, make a traitor command squad, and put on a really bad Austrian accent. Got it. Give me your green stuff, your clippers, and your glue. Also, your clothes. So if you haven't figured it out by now, the army I'm working on is my traitor guard, my renegades and heretics, or my lost and the damned. It really depends what edition you started as to what you would call these guys. I've converted up five models using a combination of parts, the Cadian command squad, the blooded kill team, and even some forge world renegades and heretics I use sparingly. So first of all, I've always had a big thing for sniper rifles. I think it's because I've been denied them as a chaos player for so many years. So I'm definitely including one of them in the platoon command squad. This uses the old Cadian Veteran Squad Sniper and Cloak, a Skitari hat, and a Traitor Guard torso. I'm going to need to do some green stuff work just to fill some small gaps later, but that should be pretty easy. In particular, I love how the Ranger head actually works with these cloaks, and I think this guy looks like a pretty effective sniper operative. Very Alpha Legion aligned. And the other model I had done some significant work on at home is this Medic. I absolutely love this Medic. I think it came together really well. The core of it uses the Cadian medic from the command squad, including the backpack with the stretcher in it and the stowed last gun. However, I've used the death corpse of Krieg medic helmet and also arms for this awesome arm with an inbuilt bone saw where he's just drawing some liquid out of a vial with a syringe. I added on a resin chaos shoulder pad onto one of those arms just to keep them chaosy and also used a traitor guard torso. I gave him another medical bag with syringes on his hip. This model will also need a little bit of green stuffing as the areas where I've cut between the cadian body and the Renegade torso have just got a few little gaps on them. So as I proceed with my trainer guard, I've got my little stack of bases here. And I just wanted to give a quick shout out again to Cobalt Keep who actually sent these over a year ago now. And we shouted out their stuff then, but I use it all the time and I love it and I just dropped it. So next up I have my plasma gunner. Now I was pretty keen for this cause I had some bits and I knew what I wanted to do. So the first thing I needed to do was carve off the torso from the Astra Militarum parts, freeing that up for me to use this awesome resin bit from a third party to get a nice armored carapace torso for this veteran. I think this model's super casual silhouette works really well. And I love the addition of the blooded kill teams Butcher's Cleaver, just held threateningly at the side. This guy really captures the idea of a thuggish enforcer for the Traitor Guard, and I can see him threatening other guards to get in line, and it just works for me really well. So green stuff has a working time of about 40 minutes to an hour and my 40 minutes to an hour is coming to an end and I don't want to waste this last bit of green stuff. So a little idea for you all, green stuff even when fully dry is still slightly moldable. So what I'm going to do is use my spare green stuff. I'm going to roll it out into some tattered tabards and then cut them out. And when it's dry, we'll have some bits that we can just glue on as hanging little tabards or loincloths at a later date. Next up, I had probably one of the more difficult conversions that I had to work on and that's because it was hard to find ways to change it. The new Cadian Master Vox operator is incredibly monopose. He has this ridiculous contraption around his head and so much gear and all the pieces that kind of slot together that it makes it really hard to find bits that are compatible. In the end, I managed to find a gun arm from the artillery kit that he could have to his ear that would allow him to have the last gun he's supposed to be equipped with. And for his other arm, I just used a pointing arm from the command kit. Leaving this model to only have two chaosy bits, the blooded kill team, helmet and a nice shoulder pad. A bit boring, I know, but overall, it's pretty hard to find things that pair with this kit. Overall, there's a bit of commentary for the kit. I'd say this is the kind of thing I don't like with Games Workshop's New Direction. This Master Vox operator seems kind of over-engineered and over-designed and very specific, as it's worth noting that I don't think you'll find any infantry guard armies that only have one platoon command squad. I imagine most armies are going to have a minimum of three. Oh, the future sucks. 
Just AI robots everywhere. And I miss the days when things were simpler before Murray became the leader of the resistance. I just spend the days making sweet models on Hero Forge for my armies for Warhammer 40k. Ah, oh, it sure is great living in 2023. Hero Forge is an amazing online character model builder that's perfect for any miniature need you have, including war games, tabletop games, and D&D. If you're a pro subscriber, you have access to beta features ahead of time. And the beta feature I was so excited to play with today was facial customization. It's here. What is this, Baldur's gate. It's crazy how good this customization is getting. HeroForge has an awesome in-app painter feature allowing you to pre-test paint schemes on the models that you're going to print. And if you're not going to print them or don't have a 3D printer, don't worry. Their miniatures come in a range including physical models sent to your door in multiple materials. They have high detail plastic, colored plastic, and even some metal options available for those real trophy pieces. It's completely free to have a play around with, and when you decide you found the perfect character, there are heaps of options to get it delivered to you. Use the code TABLETOPTIME on screen for 10% off your STLs. This is a really great way to get some awesome models or a surprise for the players at your table in your next role playing game. Thank you very much. I'm gonna sit down and ponder what my bright and hopeful future entails. <sighs> Oh, if I was back in the sweet times of 2023, I'd check out the links in the description of a tabletop time video and go on and see Hero Forge and make my own awesome characters today. Alas, that's not what my life has to offer. No, it's just endless killing. Killing and bad AI art. Official army lists for mere mortal evil chaos worshippers didn't come out until 2003 in Codex Eye of Terror, expanding on some chapter approved cultists from 1999. Eye of Terror offered a full list for traitors, beastmen, mutants and misfits, all desperately fighting for the attention of the dark gods. These cults and cultists had always been floating around in the background of the lore, but now we could play them properly. This era was right around the time I was into Warhammer heavily as a kid. This high of third edition glory, where custom armies and models were everywhere. As someone drawn to Chaos Space Marines, Lost in the Damned was the cool army everyone with more skill and disposable income was making, and one that I could never afford. Around 2008, Forge World followed up with custom models for Renegades and Heretics, a list that combined elements from the Imperial Guard army and other Forge World Imperial Guard models, such as artillery carriages. This range was gorgeous, but an extremely expensive way to collect a horde faction. I grabbed some models here and there but I never managed to flesh out a full army. And this is where our traitors would stay for many years. There was the inclusion of Chaos Space Marine cultists in the CSM books in 6th edition and onwards, but as for a full army list representing the scope of traitors, renegades and heretics, it was all Forge World until they were completely dropped in 2020. While the models were gone, the rules stuck around in one terrible unupdated form or another for a few more years, but eventually in 10th edition, they have gone the way of the dinosaur. I love these four models. They're so cool. They really work for me for the trader aesthetic and my platoon command squad is almost done. It's time to do the commander and he's the one I'm really excited about. Let's do it. So it's been a challenge finding an arm that I was happy with for my commander. I want him to look not like the biggest, strongest enforcer in the world. He's more of a tactician, but I also wanted him to represent his war gear. So there were three plasma pistols I tried and a couple of bare arms, but in the end, I've gone with the trader guard plasma pistol just held at the side pointing down. With that done, I'm going to glue on a couple of pouches and spikes and call these done and get ready to paint. I'm excited. These are fun. What a fun little platoon command squad. So I'm going to be painting up this Trader Command team and how I did that I'll quickly run over before I talk a little bit about them. So my traders are from a horrible, barren, ashy world, which means a whole lot of greys. I wanted these guard to look very realistic in the sense that the uniforms of their military often mimic the environments they would often be fighting in. A lot of the tertiary colors are browns in terms of the leathers. And for other elements, I like to bring in almost a Bioshocky steampunk vibe with these horrible brass and tin bits of metal. So who are my trader guard? Well, I'm bringing them back for 40K and I want them to be a cool faction. So I wanted them to fit in the 41st millennium and have a cool bit of lore. The trader PDF fight under the emblem of the unbroken chain, that chain symbol that I freehand on all of the models. And the Astra Militarum army basically represents soldiers that have been manipulated by the Alpha Legion into this uprising for a very specific purpose. I'm tying a lot of my 40K factions together narratively really closely because that's the kind of thing I like to do. So my 
my Alpha Legion are a splinter group who are bargaining with their Dark Mechanicum allies to basically secure them a Manufactorum world to build more advanced arms and armor for the Alpha Legion. And these Trader Guard represent the defenders of the Manufactorum world that are effectively pawns in this gambit. However, the Alpha Legion are nothing if not pragmatic. And I don't see them as the horrible chaos worshippers that many of the other Chaos Space Marines factions are. While they're willing to expend mortal lives as tools, they also don't believe in unnecessary cruelty or suffering. So they deliberately chose a world that was truly under the oppressive yoke of tyranny and was being overtaxed by Imperium Administratum officers. While of course they will cut and run and abandon this if they need to, my Alpha Legion do intend on at least managing this planet in a way that is more beneficial for the people living on it. They'll still be producing arms and materiel for a war effort, they'll just be going towards a different master. I think having some nuance of a Imperial people that are so desperate and so downtrodden that they would side with traitors and those traitors actually deliver on some of their promises, at least in the short term, improving their lives is a nice little twist in 40K. Now, of course, the Imperium is gonna come down like a hammer and wipe them out and they'll all be dead one day, but we're focusing on the short term gains that the people in really desperate situations can often strive for. A fun thought I've recently had when looking at the Astra Militarum army list is the Imperial Agents. I thought it would be a really fun modeling opportunity to turn Imperial Agents into Alpha Legion Agents. Which means I'm keeping all symbols of Hydras or the 20th Legion away from my Trader Guard. These are the pawns. But the Alpha Legion do make extensive use of mortal agents. And if I do choose to include units such as Imperial Assassins, Inquisition Agents, or Navy Voidsmen, in my army in the future. These will all be done up as if they're actually Alpha Legion operatives with far better maintained equipment and Hydra tattoos, things like that more obviously emblazoned on their equipment. Sent in to support the insurrection by the Alpha Legion when required. I think this will be a really cool touch and will make for a great narrative across my entire battlefield as the Alpha Legion show their hand in manipulating this planetary defense force into doing their bidding. For now, the Trader Guard are just called the Unbroken Chain, representing the links of unity that that hold them all together, an ideal they can strive towards. And it's ironic as the Alpha Legion consider that they have really swapped the chain from one master to another. So they're the unbroken chain in two ways, which I think is a bit fun. For the basing, most of my soldiers fight out in the ash waste. So I just use some sand that's painted black and dry brushed. However, for this command squad, I wanted to emulate some of the trenches that they fight in. So in the way that I'd painted these trenches on the bases of my Chaos Knights, I could use some popsicle sticks, some sandbags and rubble to show that they are fighting from a slightly more fortified and defensible position. Uh, how will we know if he's succeeded? We'll know, Jen, because he will finally have enough points to play his traitor guard in 2063. Thank you to all the patrons who support our videos. It really allows us to, you know, make this kind of content. If we didn't have those sweet patron bucks, Murray would never have been able to afford a time machine, which allowed him to go forward into the future, gather this evidence of the dark fates that await us, bring it back to the past to do absolutely nothing with. Uh, so, you know, consider it a warning. Thanks patrons. Uh, yeah, it's great. I make questionable decisions. Oh my god, guys, it's a miracle! I mean, the robots are still massacring everyone and there's terrible AI art everywhere and everyone's still trying to use cryptocurrency, but I finally got a painted trader command squad. I don't know how that happened. They just sort of appeared. Oh, well done, Dave. You've made us all proud. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed the pointless framing mechanism that was loosely based around the 80s movie Terminator. That's all I got. Thanks to HeroForge for sponsoring the video. I can barely see anything. Bye. <laughs>